Wow, that's the park, huh? Patris, Ephilie, Spiritus Sancti. Uh, yeah, sure. This place had the metallic smell of blood and the stench of rotting flesh. This old chapel had been converted into an autopsy room. Now blood dyed its floor. My name's Gus McPherson. I'm a detective that was hired to help my client. Hello? Sir? Hello? <laughs> what the... What are you doing here? I thought I'd locked the door. So where is my cone? What are you trying to do? Give me a heart attack? Uh, sorry, Mr. Corona. Who are you and how do you know my name? Like I said earlier, I'm Detective McPherson. Inspector Skalnik told me that I could ask you a few questions. If Skalnik says it's okay, then it's okay. What happened to your hearing, if you don't mind my asking? It happened in the Great War. I was a medical aide. Now I would get the wounded from the trenches to the temporary hospital. One day we saw a wounded soldier in no man's land. We rushed to him, and a mortar shell exploded on my partner. I survived, but with hardly any hearing left. So that's where you got your experience? Yeah, mostly. Ironically, the war ended three weeks after the shell exploded. Can you walk me through your observations of this victim? Okay. Ah, the cause of death is like the others. The cut to the throat. It can't be the multiple stab wounds or the evisceration itself? No, I'm pretty sure of that. What makes you so sure? The one before her. The one we found in the park. She was killed in the same spot she was found. It was clear that it was the wound to her throat that killed her. The rest was probably done after. And how did you come to that conclusion? Because not much blood was coming from the other wounds. The heart was still beating when the throat was cut. I could tell by the amount of blood that had poured from the throat wound. So you weren't sure about the cause of death until you saw the victim in the park? Well, I had my doubts, but when I saw her, yes, she made things more clear. And the same killer would use the same brutal techniques? Precisely. Does the victim in the park have any other differences from the rest of the victims? Yes, the cut to her neck indicates an attack from behind. The rest, including this one, were attacked from the front. If only I had the other body, I could show you the difference. That's okay. Really, I trust your judgment. You don't have the body, but maybe you have a file on the victim from the park? Sure. The man who was supposed to come and get the file never showed up. What man? Skalnik's errand boy. He comes to get the files I make for each victim. He still hasn't come to get the one from the park. Ah, I see. Well, I'll take Inspector Skalnik the file, if you don't mind. No, I don't really care. <laughs> Where do you keep your files? In my safe over there. I can never remember my combination, so I wrote it on a piece of paper. You know, I think I lost it somewhere. Thank you for your time. You're welcome.
not a pretty sight. Poor doll, she never saw it coming. It looks like the first try at the throat missed. The cut to her throat is very deep. It was definitely a frontal assault. In every body, there's a puzzle waiting to be solved. I hate this part of my job. These were installed recently. Sinks. How does the safe work? Huh? What? What did you say? How does the safe work? Each number is represented by a symbol. And now the trick is, uh, you know, what was it again? It, you know, damn. I don't remember. Are you sitting me?
very good with this kind of stuff. This one was nine, but why? She was the only victim that had been attacked on the spot in the park. Maybe the police had overlooked something. I had to go see for myself. Oh, come on. It froze again? Oh, I guess it didn't. He's been nice so far. I don't want to push his hospitality. Stay away from women! Sorry, Mac. I like women too much! I woke up with a splitting headache. It wasn't the first time my smart-ass mouth got me in trouble. I better straighten things out with him later. I have other things to do. Oh, 
stones in the way. I like this statue. It reminds me of Ida. Yes, darling, hello. Yes, darling, hello. See anything unusual? <sighs> I don't see anything unusual. Thank <laughs> you. 
and life goes on. That looks like Ida's last roast. This reminds me of the Madison Avenue arsonist case I worked on. Oh my, has my friend here stolen this from you? He has, yes. I cannot help but be embarrassed. You see, I taught him to retrieve shiny objects for me, and he does so remarkably well, don't you think? Yes, he does. Being a coachman in an industrialized world is not quite what it used to be. Where are you from, sir? If you don't mind my asking. I'm from all over Europe, it seems, sometimes. I usually don't stay in one spot for very long, but I've stayed here for a while now. My legs don't allow me to travel very far, I'm afraid. But to answer your question, I'm from London, England. Come now. You used to be a detective, or a cop even, right? I'm a simple coachman and wish to remain that. I ask you to no longer continue in this line of questioning. Please, out of genuine courtesy. Very well. Who are you? On good days, as I mentioned earlier, I work as a coachman for the odd tourist or for the prostitutes who want to make their way through the city at a bargain price. On not so good days, my friend whom you've already met becomes a thief to help me make ends meet. On bad days, I'm merely reduced to being a homeless bum. So you know some of the prostitutes around here? Yes, I do. I've driven them here and there through the city streets. They hire me or their clients hire me, either because I'm cheaper than a taxi or they appreciate the rustic look. Do you know any personally? I knew one personally. On certain occasions we would exchange pleasantries, but most of the time I would just drive. She was very young to be doing what those animals wanted. Her name was Vladana. She was only 16 years old. She was? Yes. I haven't seen her in a long time. I fear the worst. You said her name was Vladana. Are you sure it's not Inezka? Very sure. Vladana reminded me of a girl I once knew as a young man. You must surely know about the murders. Indeed I do. Anyone who lives in this district knows. That is why I fear for Vladana's well-being. May I ask you a few questions? Sure. Who are you? And why are you so interested in the local problems? I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Gus McPherson. I'm a private investigator hired by the prostitutes to help stop the murders. They are, for obvious reasons, worried about the situation, and have no confidence in the police's competence. Admirable, Mr. McPherson. 
Admirable indeed. I have to admit that I have lost all hope in humanity. The things I have seen during my miserable life. You, Mr. McPherson, have restored my faith. Tell me, is it true? Is there a new one that washed up on the shore of the river? She didn't wash up. Never mind, that's not important. Unfortunately, yes, there is. Did you see her? Yes, I did. Don't worry, my friend. Her name wasn't Vladana. She was known as Frantiska. Thank you, Mr. McPherson. You've reassured me. You said that the body did not wash up on the shore. No, she didn't. She was, uh, forgive the expression, dumped there. How is this possible? There is only one way a man can travel throughout the city without being seen, Mr. McPherson. The sewers. Precisely. He is using them to move back and forth, limiting the possibility of witnesses. I've stumbled on a few underground passages in this city, but I never found any in this neck of the woods. Maybe you should start looking for some. It would certainly help you in your investigation. Have you talked to the police about your theory? Yes, I have. But who listens to a homeless bum? Especially not one who outwits the inspector. That Inspector Skullnick is quite a unique individual. Unique, huh? Is that Latin for asshole? <laughs> is there anything else you can tell me that might help me in my investigation? I'm afraid not, Mr. McPherson. Only that little theory of mine. I'm only a coachman trying to survive, and this little fellow helps me. Speaking of which, may I have that ring back? Dear me, of course. Thank you. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. It's quite all right. girl's tattoos, the one in the tub. I have advice to offer you, Mr. McPherson. Never take on a suspect who is rich and powerful. Ida, what are you doing here? I found something that might help you. Weren't you supposed to see the doctor? Ida, please don't do this. Do what? Help. Why can't I help you? Because it's dangerous. Don't you know there's a seriously deranged man roaming the streets, preying on women? Oh, I can handle myself. I don't doubt that for a second, but I'd like to know that you're somewhere safe so I can concentrate on the case and not worry about you. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I... What have you found out? Oh, it's really good. I was asking a few questions of some of the women. Anyway, one of them admitted that she'd heard that one of the victims survived an attack and was hiding in the scrapyard. That's great, but how reliable is the source? I have to admit it's only a rumor, but isn't it worth taking a look? Yes, it is. Be careful. I will. Stay off the streets, but first go see the doctor. Yes, I will. I'll see you later. A and Ida? Yes? Thanks for the info. You're welcome, and I love you too. 